let's look at the cyclic prefix in OFDM. And we're going to start by looking at a single carrier with BPSK. So here's a symbol that is a positive one. So it's a carrier waveform multiplied by positive one. And then after that, in the next symbol period, we're going to send a negative one. So it's the carrier waveform multiplied by negative one. And let's think about this, especially about this transition between the two symbols. What if we're in a multipath environment where there's a second path? maybe a direct line of sight, and the second one has bounced off a wall. Of course, in practice, there are many paths, but let's just think of one. So this path has got a delay, and this is going to mean that that transition point on the second path, which comes with the delay, is going to come at a later time. Of course, these two add up in the air, so when you receive it, you receive the addition of the two waveforms. Now, what, let's look at this transition point here. So this causes a problem in the second symbol because there's a discontinuity here in the signal. Let's just think about the rest of the signal. This is one sinusoid plus a delayed sinusoid. And what we know is, you can verify this for yourself, but a sinusoid plus a sinusoid at the same frequency with a different phase equals another sinusoid at that same frequency. So if you're adding two sinusoids together, it does not change the frequency. All it does is change the amplitude and the phase. So for this period, when you're receiving the two added together after this discontinuity, for the rest of that period there, the BPSK signal, which went in with a constellation of plus one and minus one, is simply now going to come out, because it's the addition of two sinusoids over that period, it's going to come out with a different amplitude and a different phase. So perhaps those two points, that means a rotation and an amplification, maybe a compression. A could be less than one or bigger than one, um, depending on your normalization and your amplifier and your receiver. Uh, but it's going to come with an amplitude, A, and a phase, psi. Okay, now all that means is your plus and minus one constellation points have rotated. Uh, so at the output, when you receive that signal, it's simple to do equalization because you just send a training period where you measure what that amplitude and phase is, uh, and then you can simply, in your receiver, rotate the constellation back. So for this period of time, it's going to be a simple case for equalization of rotating back, but we've still got this problem of the discontinuity. So how do we deal with that? Well, one thing we could do is to extend our waveform to be one cycle longer. In the case of this example, I'm going to use one cycle. It could be more than one cycle, and of course you could have symbols that last for much longer than four cycles of the carrier. Let's just consider here if we extended it by one more cycle for this example. So this is extended by one more cycle. So this becomes now the received symbol. So we're still only going to receive the symbol over this time frame, but we're going to have a transmit symbol, which is longer. Transmit symbol. So we're now going to send for a longer period of time, in this case one cycle longer, just to show, use it as an illustrative purpose. Uh, and then this means this one also comes longer. And of course these ones go longer as well at the end. So now we're sending five cycles instead of four, but we're still only receiving over four. And what we can see here is, one way to think about it, is that on the second path, part of the signal that's going into the next symbol is now the same as the signal which is coming in at the start of the symbol. So for this symbol that's sent at this time, over this period of time, some of, on the second path, which is a delayed path, some of the energy is coming at a later time beyond the decision boundary. But because we extended it earlier and we're only receiving over this period, now this part, which is a prefix, if we say we call it a prefix, we send at the start, then that energy is now coming within the receive symbol, the energy the same that was leaked out the end. So the energy that's leaked out at the end on the second path is now coming in at the start. That's one way to think about it. And now over this received symbol time, it is just the addition of two sinusoids. There is no discontinuity anymore. And for the second symbol, what this means is we would be receiving over the, we, this, is, this becomes the, the prefix of the second symbol, and we still receive over four cycles of the second symbol.
So the second symbol here we receive over this. And now this discontinuity is happening in this zone in between the two received symbols. So this would be received symbol 1 and this would be received symbol 2. And what we've done is, what we do is we discard the, what we receive in the interim period of time. So that's the penalty that you pay. So the advantage is if you've done this extension where you extend the transmit symbol to make it longer, if you do it in this case by one cycle, but it could be by any integer numbers of cycles, uh, if you do it by, an, by a cycle, an integer number of cycles, then this becomes the, the energy that you're sending which you are then discarding. But in the period where you are receiving, you've now got exact addition of two sinusoids. You don't have the discontinuity anymore. There's no discontinuity in this received symbol time. Uh, the discontinuity happens within the period that you're going to discard. So you pay a penalty, but you get a benefit. The benefit is much easier equalization. The penalty is the loss of energy and time spent transition uh, while you're sending the prefix which you then discard but the benefit turns out to be uh, worth it uh, as long as you choose the cyclic the, the prefix to be short enough uh, in comparison to the length of the symbol of course you could have a long symbol the longer the symbol that you have uh, comparatively the shorter the prefix then you you've got a more efficient system uh, one problem with that is the longer the symbol that you have, the more time you have for the channel to change uh, during that period of time, and then you have a time varying channel. So that's the trade-off. So this is, this is why we put a prefix. So why do we put a cyclic prefix? Well, let's think about the multi-carrier situation for OFDM. So here's the way I think about OFDM. It's essentially exactly the same as my the situation up here on single carrier, except now you've got multiple carriers, all of them are at multiples of the base frequency. So here's the first frequency here, I've drawn the same situations up here for the transmitting uh, symbol, and I've drawn it with the prefix in here. And then the next frequency is the one that's an exact multiple of this, so there's two cycles for every cycle of this frequency of this carrier and then of course all the others below keep increasing in frequency. And so this is the multi-carrier OFDM. So why, the way I think about this is a complex number, the, which, which would be PSK, is it a plus one or a minus one? In this case I've drawn it for all of the carriers being multiplied by plus one, followed by all of the carriers being multiplied by minus one. So this is a complex number, plus one in this case in BPSK, but it's a constellation point which multiplies that carrier. And then a constellation point for the second carrier which multiplies that carrier. And of course the data is encoded into the constellation points, just like a single carrier system, but now we've got multi-carrier. So this is standard OFDM, you've got your data encoded into a vector, and then the way you generate the waveform, which is the summation of all of these carriers, is you use the inverse discrete Fourier transform, of course. And for more information on the process of OFDM, uh, you can check out the videos linked at the end of this uh, video and down below. Uh, so what we do in practice is we don't, of course, generate all of these individually, like we did in single carrier. What we do is, very efficiently, we take our vector of constellation points, we put them into an inverse discrete Fourier transform, and that gives us a time domain signal which is the addition of all of these carriers. And importantly, because we've done it this way, the length of this vector here, the number of subcarriers, is the same as the length of this symbol that is generated. These are the same lengths. So how do we get, and then if you had uh, minus ones, you'd have a different waveform here, which is the summation of all of the uh, all of these carriers times their constellation points. So this is what you get from the inverse discrete Fourier transform, and the question is, uh, in, in the case of single carrier, you just made that carrier last for a longer period of time. In the case of OFDM, you don't have each carrier separately, you just have the time domain waveform. So what do we put in the prefix? We can't just make this longer, we have to make it longer because it's not just a single sine wave anymore, we have to think of a clever way to make this longer, to add this prefix, which is going to mean that we don't have this problem uh, with the transitions. And the way to do it is to take the last 
portion of the time domain signal and make a copy of it and put it at the start. And so if you do that, this is called a cyclic prefix because you're putting it from the back to the start. So you keep it at the back, of course. So you keep this time domain. This is in the time domain in this direction. This is time. So this is the time direction. And this down here, of course, is the frequency direction down here. So you're coding data in the frequency generates a time domain signal. And if you take the last portion of that signal, and if it's an integer multiply, multiple of the, uh, of the base carrier, then you put that at the start as a cyclic prefix. And the same thing, of course, here. You put this uh, portion of the waveform here at the start. Uh, and then you are going to have a system where the as exactly as we saw up here, because this is just this, this is what's happening on the first carrier, and the same thing is going to happen on all of the carriers. So there will be discontinuities for all of these carriers, these discontinuities here, on the second path and any other paths, as long as you pick your cyclic prefix adequately of an adequate length, then all these discontinuities on all of the subcarriers will occur in this time interval. And the fact that you pick the last part of the energy, exactly as we talked about here, you can, one way to think about it is the energy from this part of the symbol, which on subsequent delayed paths will leak into the next symbol, that energy, because you've copied that at the start, that energy is also going to leak in at the start of your symbol. So the energy you lose at the end from the multiple delayed paths is going to be coming back in at the start. So again, you take this portion of the signal here and this is what you receive in the receiver. This portion of the signal here is what you receive in the receiver, and you put that into your, uh, into your discrete Fourier transform to regenerate the estimates of the data. So this goes into the discrete Fourier transform. This at the second period symbol goes into the discrete Fourier transform, and you discard what was in the cyclic prefix. Okay, so this is a way that I think it's very helpful to think about OFDM, uh, to have this picture, this two-dimensional picture in your mind of encoding data in the frequency domain, using the IDFT to generate the time domain, but of course then you need to know how to extend your time domain signal so that you can, uh, you can have a period where all these discontinuities are going to happen that you can then discard. And this is a cyclic prefix in OFDM. So don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos. Uh, check out the links below for other videos explaining OFDM. And uh, sub uh, like the video to help others to find the video.